In this presentation, we're going to continue on to part 10 of our C Corporation comprehensive problem. This time looking at an M1 adjustment related to depreciation, the difference between book depreciation and tax depreciation. Here we are on the first page of our 1120. Note it's good practice every time you think about an M1 because it's a more complicated kind of thing to, to think about. You're doing a journal entry to think about first, are you in balance in terms of the tax return? So I'd go back to page uh, six. Here's our, our balance sheet. We are starting off in balance. We have the book income tying out at the 1461500. dollars scrolling down. That's the 1461500 down below. So we're, we're good starting out. If I go back to our return, the things that are going to be involved here is that we're going to have the depreciation on the books at the uh, 2976. Part of it being recorded on page one. We overrode this. So we're going to be dealing with that. And we're going to be dealing with the amount that was recorded on the 1120A. That's recorded here, the 235714, matching the depreciation on the depreciation schedules for a book basis. Where we have, if we scroll to the right, that 2976 and the 235714 here. So we're going to be dealing with those numbers. And if we go to the 1120 down to page 6, we'll be dealing with the... Uh, accumulated depreciation as well as the M1s. Now depreciation is going to be one of the more complicated M1s. So we're going to deal with a complicated one first and then we'll go, the other M1s should be easier after that point in time. Why is it complicated? We have the complicated schedules down here for the depreciation schedules. If you have a difference between the book depreciation and tax depreciation, which doesn't have to be the case for smaller corporations, but if it's a larger corporation, they're probably going to be having uh, their book depreciation on more of a generally accepted accounting principle, which has the matching principle, which would which would use gap uh, principles, which are going to differ from the tax return. So so you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with that. That's going to be one difference. So we'll have that difference there. Also, when we deal with this, it's going to have um, if we have sales or purchases that will affect the cost, the uh, accumulated depreciation. And that's going to be a, fa a factor as well. So in other words, we'll have two M1s with the sales activities and the depreciation as we allow the software to kind of do the work for us. So we're going to let the software have all the information of these two schedules, which are complex, and then ask it to just basically do the adjustment for us, which is great. However, when we let the software magically do something for us, and it doesn't turn out right. We don't know really exactly what happened. It's hard for us to see what happened. So therefore, what we want to do is, is allow the software. I want to make the software do it one thing at a time so that I can then reconstruct it in uh, Excel and verify what's going on as it goes so I can understand it. I can explain it if, if I need to, to a supervisor or an audit in a future uh, standpoint, a future time. And so we can understand the comprehend how the M1s will work. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to page one. I'm going to scroll down to the 2976. Now this 2976, you'll remember that we overrode this number. I'm going to remove the override and see what the software does for us. So I'm going to go back to our data and I'm going to go into the deductions. We're going to go into the deductions up top and we have an override here indicated by the O. I'm going to remove that, let the software do it and then we'll figure out what the software has done. So I'm going to delete that. Say so we don't want this to be here. I'm going to delete both the, the items that we put in there and the adjustment. You might want to write it down. But this number is in our software. So we know that that's, that's the book number here. So I'll delete that. I'll let the software calculate it. So now it's at the 4373. Does that make sense? If we go to the depreciation for a tax basis now, rather than the book basis, we have the 4373. So that makes sense. So now let's go back up top. And I want to take a look at it for the 1125A, where we have this 235714. So again, we're gonna we're gonna we overrode that. I'm gonna remove the override. This one we might want to write down. I'm not gonna hear, but you might want to write it down because it's included in the cost of goods sold and therefore not as transparent for us to see on a book basis. So we want to make sure we have that down somewhere, what it is. I'm going to go to the depreciation. I'm going to go into this item and remove that. So I'm going to just remove that calculation and then say, okay. And let's see what the software then calculates there. 
we get the 288 uh, 585. Let's go to the depreciation schedule. Does that make sense? Regular depreciation. Scrolling to the right, scrolling down to this one, the 288585. So that looks good, looks correct on the tax basis. Now let's go to our 1120. Go to page six. Does it put us out of balance? Yes, it does put us out of balance. Let's take a look at the M1s. Are there any M1s adjustments? No M1 adjustments. There should be because we're hoping to have a difference between the book and tax. Now we're going to tell the system which we would like you to record the M1 adjustment related to the book and tax. So the default for Lacert is to have the tax and the book the same. No M1 adjustment. We have a difference. We need to tell Lacert to please enter that adjustment for us. So we're going to go back in here. We're going to go to the balance sheet miscellaneous. We're going to change this from the default to number four and say we would like you to calculate that. Now let's go back to the forms. And now we have an M1 here, the 11397. And that is due to a sale. And then we have an M1 up here of the 54268. Now, are we in balance? No. Let's see what we're off by. We're going to go, all right, let's see what happened here. We've got the 6283500 the 6272103. Oh, that's the 11397. And that's the sale down here. We don't want to deal with the sale yet. I only want to deal with the depreciation M1. See how two things happen at the same time due to the fact that we had a sale, which has a difference in accumulated depreciation of the property, plant, and equipment. I don't want to deal with that yet. I just want to deal with this one M1. I'm going to therefore negate this M1 by going right clicking and jumping to it. And then I'm going to say that we want to say this is going to be, uh, I'm going to put it down here in the other. I'm going to negate it by saying negative 11397. And we might put something like temp adjustment. You're right. And then I'm going to say, okay. We could put it in our notes too, uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go back to the forms because we already put in the notes that we're going to be dealing with the sales M1. And we'll do that in the future presentation. So now we're at the 54269. And that puts us back in balance up top. So there's going to be the M1 adjustment uh, that we have. So now let's see if we can mirror what happened uh, in the software and say, okay, what, you know, what did the software do? That's as clear as we can do it one M1 at a time on the software. It's still a little confusing though. So let's, if we go back over here, we're going to call this a tax entry instead of an adjusting entry. We're going to be working on this side now. Now, to do the tax entries, you may want to hide some sales. I'm going to go ahead and hide these two sales. I'm not doing the adjusting entries anymore. I'm doing the tax entries. I'll put my cursor on N to O. Let go of the selected area. Right click. Hide them. Okay. And then we're going to be dealing with our uh, adjusting entry here. So the adjusting entry, if we go back, I'm going to say, all right, now. That, now, the way I would typically do this, instead of entering the difference between the two, is to simply reverse the book uh, depreciation and then record the tax depreciation rather than trying to record the difference between the two the result of the two journal entries will be the difference so this so for example i'm going to remove the book depreciation first now i'm not going to try to put the debits on top here because i'm just going to record the normal depreciation journal entry and put put the credit on top because i think that's easier to read so in other words what's the normal depreciation journal entry you would normally debit depreciation. And in this case, you have to debit cost of goods sold because part of the expense went to cost of goods sold because they were manufacturing, we're saying here. And then the other side is going to go to accumulated depreciation. Now I'm going to credit the depreciation first because I'm reversing the book entry. And you may want to put notes up top. I'm going to put a new note and say this is going to be to reverse book depreciation so we can record tax depreciation and you, and you probably could have put a note up here up here too the notes are useful for yourself for future uh time periods if you if, if you are getting audited three years in the future notes are going to be useful you can't remember everything and obviously if you're someone else is reviewing it or uh, going to be looking at it next year to review to try to do the tax return for someone else to do it notes are really helpful okay so now we're going to go back and uh, we want to go to the depreciation schedules 
and I'm going to go to the book depreciation and reverse that one first. So remember the book depreciation. Uh, we have this number. We have the, this number, the 2976. That's straightforward. So I'm going to say this is a credit of 2976. And then the other side is not so straightforward because it's in cost of goods sold. And it was for the... 235714. So this is going to be a credit 235714. And then we're going to debit. This is the plug formula, negative sum. We're just going to add those up and make it a debit. So it looks backwards, but I still think it's easier to construct this way and look at it. So now I'm going to record this and reverse what we did for the books. So now we're on the tax side. We're going to reverse the books. So this is going to go down to zero. I'm in Q29 equals scrolling back up. We pick up that 2976. Then we're going to go to the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold is here. So I'm going to be in Q23 equals. We pick up that uh, 235714. So this one went down to zero. This one decreased not to zero because it's only a component of the cost of goods sold. And then we're going to go up to the accumulated depreciation and reverse that one. So, so now this goes back down the book value then increasing. Now we're going to record the tax record on a tax basis, same accounts involved, but this time in the, you know, in the right order, debiting, debiting and crediting the accounts we would expect. It's a tax journal entry, not an adjusting journal entry. I'm going to put a note to it. We're going to say note record tax depreciation. And then we're going to pick this up on a tax basis. So I'm going to go to the tax basis up top and let's go to the, to the second one, the regular tax basis. So we have the 4373. So I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be depreciation 4373. The amount that's in the cost of goods sold, if I scroll down, is going to be 288585. So this is going to be 288585. Is that right? One more time. 288585, right? And then we're going to credit the plug formula, negative sum, and that's going to be the 2929598. Uh, Let's record this. I'm going to go to the debit for depreciation. Something is in it, so I'm going to double click on it, double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus. It's always a plus on, on this worksheet to record in this uh, column, and that'll be the 4373. So there, now that's on a on a tax basis now. Then the cost of goods sold, here's the cost of goods sold here, uh, cost of goods sold here, something's in the column, so I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus, scroll back up and pick up that 288585, uh, uh, yeah, the 288585, and that increases here, and of course that's only a component of the cost of goods sold, then the accumulated depreciation, something's in it, we're going to record this, double clicking on it, going to the end of it, plus, picking up that 292958 and enter. So there we have it. Now these are our changes now, the difference between reversing the prior journal entry and recording the current journal entry. So if we if we now take a look at the uh, tax return, we're going to say, all right, let's go back up to the 1120. If I go down to uh, the first page, I got the uh, 4373, 4373, that ties out to our 4373 here. So that looks good. Going to go back to the tax return. This looks good. Now, the 1125A, we've got the 288585. So I'll scroll back over here. That's a component of this number. The total number on our, on our here is the, for cost of goods sold is the 969895. So that's going to be the 969895. Scrolling down to the calculation for the income. First page of the 1120. We have the 147232. So we've got uh, the 140732. Let's do that one more time. 140732. 140732. Last page of, of the 1120. 
and we are in balance so that's good and then we have our m1 so we have the book number of the 1461 500 so that's the 1461 500 and then we have the uh the tax of the 1407232 oh, so then we have the uh 1407232 oh, and the difference is that 54268 so if we take a look at that the difference here is the 54 uh, 258 and that of course is is the change between the book and tax depreciation here and here also reflected in the accumulated difference between the accumulated depreciation between the book and tax so that's our first uh, look at looking at those m1s and again this one's a little bit more tricky because uh, you know we had to let the software kind of do something and then it magically made the m1 for us and we had to figure out kind of what it did We'll do that again with the sale because it's going to deal with depreciation as well. And then we'll get to, to some M1s that we'll do more on a manual basis, even within the tax software, to make it a little bit more transparent, even within the tax software.